it is arguably the hardest time in the history of education, the hardest time in the history of our country. And so I know you're dealing with just remarkably large, often daunting challenges. But I just want to say, I think parents, I think people broadly have a newfound recognition for the role that educators play in the lives of their kids and also the future of their communities. And I just want to really say from the bottom of my heart how grateful I am to you for all you're doing because it, it just sets a tone for what our country's capable of when you see that kind of passion and dedication and commitment. I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that I think I've picked up from you over the period of time I've been immersing myself in this world of education. And I still don't view myself, by the way, as any form of expert. I, I feel like I'm a plagiarist, right? I just listen and learn from you guys and then try to say back the things that you're doing that make so much sense. But as many of you know, we have developed this resource we call the Innovation Playlist, which was based on five big ideas. And those five big ideas were the things that when those were in place, teachers, schools, districts could make enormous progress, even states. First, I think it's indispensable to bring a community together, to recognize, to see, to appreciate a different vision of education and to get excited about it. If your community's behind you, you can do amazing things. And then when you look at the way kids learn, the places that I think we're making incredible progress, you know, in normal times, were the places where students had real voice in their learning, where the learning was connected to the real world, where students could see why it's real, and then where you were trusted to develop more authentic assessments, where you assess student work on the basis of evidence of mastery and real accomplishment instead of bubble test. And then the final big idea, the fifth big idea, was to make sure every kid felt like they were part of a caring and connected community. What has been so interesting, right, is as I check back with the places we filmed and the places I've written about, the people I've interviewed and talked about and brought to life, I've asked them, how did the spring go? How has this fall gone? And, and they said, you know, like, no doubt we're in a world of challenge. No doubt the inequities that have run through our system and differentially impacted young kids in ways that are, I think should be off the table in terms of acceptability in our country, all those inequities have been magnified. But places that had those five big ideas in place shared with me again and again, there was no drop off in learning. A kid who can manage their own learning, can pick what they're interested in, can draw on resources around them, can create and carry out bold initiatives. That kid can do it whether they're in school or out of school. Teachers that reimagine their role as being guiding and inspiring their kids instead of instructing them. Report, it was actually, you know, I could pop in, I could do form, informal, you know, uh, office hour sessions, I could answer questions, I could give encouragement. So there was really no diminution in learning during this bollock stuff time, despite a lot of other challenges. The thing I really want to focus on is we're all exposed to the national narrative, right? If we don't get our kids quickly back to normal school, a whole generation is at risk. And, and to that I say, normal school is not the solution. Normal school is the problem. You know, normal school is what was putting an entire generation of kids at risk. If we continue to do things in school that value kids for their ability to retrieve content, replicate low level procedures and follow instructions, we're pushing out a generation of kids that are good at exactly what computers do perfectly. And so here's what I worry about, but here's what I'm optimistic about. I worry if we just try to port a failed model, a model that didn't work that well in person, put it on Zoom, sort of make the, the, the sense that this will be a lost year come to reality because we all sort of throw up our hands and know that's ineffective. If that's what we do, if that's what we make it this year, we will, to use something from Hamilton, we will have missed our shot. This is our moment. Nobody can make heads or tails of these state mandated exams. They weren't given last spring. So those tests aren't gonna mean anything. Nobody's looking over your shoulder to see where you are in standardized curriculum. Colleges are dropping the ACT and SCT, you know, like there's no tomorrow. Those tests are on their way out. 
And all of those built-in patterns of behavior and expectations that school should be the way it's always been, they're off the table. So the door is wide open. And if we just sort of step back and say, now's the time for us to move forward with the kind of school we've always wanted to have, instead of the kind of school we inherited, we know how to do this. We can draw on our successes and strengths. I, I think this year will be a year we look back on and say, this was not the lost year, this was the found year. And we have unleashed so much potential among our students and our teachers, potential that normal school all too often squanders. And we can set the stage for remarkable learning year in and year out for years to come. And so, again, enormous gratitude, respect and appreciation for what you're doing. And together, I think we can show the world just what's possible. Mm -hmm.